Greetings, I am Takur. Greetings. I heard you call for me. Is yeah, there a question? Yes, um, there's a question from Barbara about a, a ship that was seen by two different members of Hukalo, and she was inquiring as to who it was, if you if you know. And you and would, what did the ship look like? She didn't say, but she said that you had said uh, at oh. the time that uh, it was seen by two different members, but that's all the information I have. I'll just let her type if she can respond quickly. It, this was, <clears throat> I know which ship they speak of. This was the Octorian ship that had the uh, medical group in. There's a medical group of Octorians that travel around. They they don't always interact, but they are uh, they're very curious about uh, new medical discoveries on your planet, and so they do uh, read some of the databases about medical information. And so, yes, they're one of the one of the ships that uh, are seen quite frequently. Okay, thank you very much. Um, do we have any questions in the room for Takur, uh, in your room, Takur? I do not know. Any questions in here for me? Thank you for your time yesterday. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. She just said thank you for your time yesterday, and that that was good. Thank you. Okay, perfect. But, uh, um, it looks like Christine, do you have a question? Yes, I do, Tucker. Um, I was wondering, um, are they um, going to have a world um, a world meeting or anything with any of the leaders? Yes, it has been postponed several times now because yeah. of the condition of the world and the threats being made one to another in private and in public. So therefore, um, it has been pushed back to June at this point. Well, at least it's still there. <laughs> yes, we. It, it's well overdue, however. Uh, but it'll be the around the middle part of June. That is when they're shooting for, there is no specific date. Um, there are certain ones that were invited to the last council that will not be invited to this one, which is unfortunate, but um, they just cannot be in the same room together at this point. So um, it is interesting that this kind of uh, council would have those kinds of problems, but it is what it is. If we um, send um, energy towards um, just the idea of the council getting together, would that be sufficient to help um, the energy that's around there? Everything will help. I do not know if it will be sufficient enough, but if, it, if enough of you send energy, it will definitely help. Okay. Absolutely. Do not be um, prayer and thanksgiving and uh, prayers for this kind of thing are all are very helpful. Yes. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Mark, are you are you? Was your question the same as what Christine was asking? Well, similar. I, I'm just okay, please looking go ahead. For some, some general updates as to what's happening with Kirk Fickner and Hukalo. Uh, any progress on um, addressing uh, astral memories for visitors uh, visiting the colonies, et cetera, and other new uh, technologies or members in the Birkvicknir Alliance? That, that project was put on hold for a little while because Earth energies are not uh, conducive to this kind of uh, technology. And they did develop something, but they can't test it really until the energies go down a little bit but something has been developed um they're still working on other things that might improve even on that development and that technology but um at this point we're waiting for some uh time to do some experimentation and that has not been given to us yet so um after we learn <clears throat> how successful this first one uh, that we put into uh, 
uh, into reality is, then we can test the next one. And See if it's even better. Lovely. But updating the colonies, people are still coming and going as per usual. Some, are, of course, are remembering. Some are not. Uh, for the most part, those that remember, are get, their memories are getting better. And for, and for those that have no memory, they are still this, have no memory. So we are not sure what part of the mind that is actually triggering the subconscious to be uh, aware in some people and not in others. So we are trying to do that when, whenever we do have those people that are here that can remember, we do some studies on their brain mapping to see what has been activated that uh, the other ones have not had activated. But at this point, it would appear that the same activations that are causing people to understand and see things and bring things back are activated in those that do not bring things back as well. So it is a little bit of a mystery. Indeed. Um, and just anything general in terms of um, galactic support for Kirk Fickner's goals. We are in alliance with many. Of course, being in alliance with many is a good thing. But remember this. Everyone has a different idea of how to do things. And so that is where we all differ, is how to do things. We want to, we want to interact and be positive and do what is right for the planet. However, we have different ideas on what that is and how to do it. Many disagree with the fact that we help with the weather and disagree that we help with uh, tectonic and volcanic. They think that's too interactive. However, it does not um, change the thought processes of the people. It does not interact with politics. It does not do any of the things that are against the rules, but it does help humanity, a, a more of humanity survive. And so they're saying we shouldn't do that because perhaps some of these people that we're causing or helping to survive should not survive. But I cannot see that um, as a problem, but some of them do. So you see, it is all in the way that you look at things, it's all in the way that you interact. Many will just send thought processes to humanity or men, some will just send messages such as I'm giving right now through channeling or psychic abilities to earth and not do anything else. Some will send representation with permission from the galactic government to the political governments just to tell them uh, some, they, they are actually told what they are allowed to say to the governments to not be too interactive, but only give them an idea what is possible for them if they accept first contact. Now, that can be extremely vague in some situations. And there are those um, communication barriers that do, do cause problems. So there are many things that we deal with out here that you may not even think about. Well, thank you very much for that information and all that you do. Thank you. We are doing our best. <laughs> thank you, Takur. Um, Slava has a question. He's saying, hello, Takur. I would like to ask if it does not violate any rules if it's possible to establish communication with our children and their parents, at least through text messages, it seems quite possible for both sides. Perhaps we could create a mailbox for communication with children in this way. We could be more in touch with the children and their parents. Thank you. At, at this point, th that has been discussed. Um, several things have been discussed with uh, uh, communication with hybrid children. Right now, astral visitation is the only thing that has been really approved. And 
in both directions. They can come astrally to you and you can go astrally to them. But there has been nothing solid in a third dimension that has been improved. There's been much discussion of it. And the reason why it hasn't been approved is, it, is that your governments say that it is too much evidence that uh, we exist. And they do not want humans to have that much evidence about it. And, and it's the same with having us come to the planet. That's too much evidence because people will actually see um, in third dimension that we are here. They can now if people say I've seen the holograms or I've seen astral projections, that can be explained away as something else. And your governments would do that very easily. But to have someone appear and have you take a picture of them or whatever, that's much harder to uh, explain away. And so they're, they're very cautious about what kind of evidence is uh, presented of, their, of our existence because they do not want people to know uh, definitively that we are here. Of course, they see the ships, they take the pictures, but many times they'll say, that was our government, or that was so-and-so's government sending out some uh, ships that were experimental or whatever. They can tell many stories about things in the sky that you don't know anything about. But if somebody were to be standing beside you and they could take a picture, or they could start seeing that text was appearing from nowhere and talking about hybrid children, that would be quite a bit of evidence uh, against their theory that there is no aliens. Remember, yeah. even the little, even those things that could only be marginal sometimes in their, in uh, uh, proving that we exist, they still are very frightened of. Okay, thank you for that. Um, there's a question uh, from Sheer and then Ava. Very good. Uh, hey, Tikur, how are you? I am well. You and how are you? I'm very well. You said something, I kind of missed it, something about June and two parties don't, don't want to be in the same room together. What did you meant? Oh, there are certain political groups, countries, that are uh, standing up against one another and will not be at, if one is there, the other one will not be at those galactic meetings because they are in odds against one another. They're at odds against one another and they do not want to be in the same room together and they do not want to come to the galactic meetings because they have too much on their plate on their own in their own country's agenda or whatever. So it is sometimes very difficult to have these meetings at this juncture in your time space. I have a question. Yes. Let's say some of them don't want to speak with one another or be in the same room. Why can't you just uh, tell them we are going to be on that date in that place. If you're not going to be there, you will, you will not have the vote right. And maybe we're going to give certain uh, things to those who are going to show up and show us a good faith and no. you will miss it. Well, this is true. We've already given that information to them. Some of them say we're small countries. We don't make a difference anyway. It's always the big countries that make the decisions and are in control of everything. Even though we do take a vote of all the countries for certain things, they still feel unappreciated and not valuable. So we try to give them as much value as possible, but it is true that some of the larger nations will have more control or be or be listened to by more more countries than smaller nations. So the more obvious question would be why not get you know China, India, Russia and the US, Britain, just get them in, in a room, tell them, well, what do you need we have, to 
have first contact? How can we help you help the humanity? In the early days, that is what happened. Only the major countries were involved. However, it seemed unfair that that would be the case, and so we brought in the other countries. Now, the thing is, the those big countries also suggested that we bring in the smaller countries because they want their uh, support. They want the support of these other countries, and so they want us to bring in these other places. Um, and because they say these countries will support us, these countries may not. So let's bring in as many countries as possible because we can win over some of these other places to our side, our thinking. And besides, some of the larger countries have very similar thoughts on um, first contact anyway. So they want to be, they want to establish a world thought process about it. So bringing in these other countries makes sense to them so that they can actually <clears throat> propagandize in some way what the world to their point of view i see so why not divide the groups to two or three or four take the we, one that have a positive outcome and adopts them yes we do what your people you you see the your earth actually organizes how they want this to play out we allow that because we are not allowed to stop them in any way from organizing the way they want to we make suggestions but they are they fall on deaf ears many times but you have to understand they have free will and we allow them since we are not to uh physically interfere with them they we allow them to set up the parameters and they do the thinking and we then come and present our cases and thought processes but they organize how the how it's to be heard and seen and so we cannot do much about that i see so is there going to be some kind of a meeting in june yes uh, so far in the middle of june is when it's supposed to happen okay well i will look forward for for that meeting and hopefully i will have uh, my speech that will help them come around well, there are many of you that are going to speak again, and this time there's only there's going to be even more humans involved than before. So that is good. There are much more, many more volunteers than there were before, and that is a good thing. Thank you. Um, we we are right at the top of the hour. Do you we have do you have time for one more or two more questions? Yes. Okay. Ava has a question. Thank you. Thank you so much for all your work in helping this planet. My daughter Chloe has a question. Yes. Hi, Takura. I just have one question. It's mostly about my future. So um, I've wanted to become a Bavarian and um, I'm not ready to become one yet. But I was wondering if it would be beneficial for me to become one in the future and if I could support and have children while being a Bavarian in the future. It is possible to have children when you're a Breatharian. However, becoming a Breatharian takes time and energy to, to transform your body and mind and spirit into that thought process because it is a thought process as well as a body, mind, and spiritual change. So it takes some time. It is worthy of the challenge if you can do it. There are many species that have gone through this change, but the earth and the humans are not set up to do it as easily as some of the other uh, species that have gone through much evolution and have become less physical in some ways. And um, humans are fully physical at this time, so it is difficult. Some can do it and some cannot. If you find yourself challenged by it in a way that is too difficult, then I would let it go. You can be very successful as a human without being a Breatharian and reach many high goals without it. However, 
it is a, a wonderful accomplishment if you could do it. Do you think I could do it? I do not know your physiology as well as you do, perhaps. I could check you out at some later time, but uh, right now I do not know. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, Marlene has a question. Yes. Hello to her. Uh, my question is in uh, is concerning SpaceX and Elon Musk. Um, who, on whose behalf is he working? And is it for an AI purpose that he's been sending cars and satellites and all the rest? Please. Well, there. I think that he has more than one purpose. I think that one purpose is to send his agenda to the earth. Uh, another is to um, win over thought processes uh, for this kind of agenda and to be a sort of a spiritual leader, but yet not in the sense that he is a god. He, he, he is perceived as a great, a great leader, a great and some look at him as a god as well, but he just really does not want that uh, to be the case in all places. But he does have an agenda for the earth to, uh, he believes, enlighten them, those that will be looking at God in a certain facet that only he can see him. Does that make sense to you? I mean, it's a very complex answer, I know. But I cannot really tell you. He is a very interesting in, uh, entity and has a more than one agenda. Let me put it that way. Well, that's why I asked the question in that regard. Yes. I understand it's a little, it may be a little difficult for you to answer directly. Um, yes, because there are some things that I could say that I don't want to say because it would be a judgment, and I don't want to do that because I, I want to avoid that. But I do see that there are negatives and positives on the way that he is handling this, and I, don't, and I want you to stay in the more positive side of his understanding and more positive realm of his thought process. Does that make sense to you? Yes, absolutely, thank you. And so I cannot really answer it because I do not know his mind, but I see that his agendas have changed a little bit over time. And this uh, concerns me a little bit. He's walked out on quite a few um, groups that he yes. used to take part in and yes. um, for, reasons related to what you're talking about right now, of course. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. That concerns me that he would not be inclusive. Well, if some consider you as a god, maybe that's one of the reasons. <laughs> Correct. Thank you very much, Dekar. I, I think can, this there were other reasons other than that that he left those groups. And yes. one of the reasons for one of the groups was he was not considered godly enough. So that concerns me. Well, thank you. I, um, uh, your information is very important for all of us to hear at this particular time, to, on, on these timelines. <laughs> thank yes, you. Yes, it's, it's, it's very confusing. And the answer to that question, I'm sure, came as a, a little bit of a muddle. However, I think what I said was very accurate. Again, thank you. You're welcome. Um, I guess this can be the last question. Um, it's regarding the upcoming meeting with Trump and Kim Jong-un, that Trump spontaneously accepted an offer that none of his administration even expected, nor was it planned. It was just um, offered by the uh, the leader of South Korea, and he said, sure, go out and inform the press corps. And, and, and everyone was quite in shock. And now there's going to be this very historic meeting between Kim Jong-un and, and Trump. And 
he'll be the first president to meet with him. Uh, even Clinton um, declined a meeting from his father um, back in back in that time period. So the question is, is there any work that you all are doing on the denuclearization of North Korea behind the scenes that may have influenced the choice for this meeting? We do not work in that way. <clears throat> We do not uh, physically denuclearize or change the way that people, uh, governments think or act. Our, our only physical interactions with the earth are seismic, volcanic, and axis, and weather, and things of that nature. But we will not denuclearize any place, nor will we give any suggestions about uh, pro or con in that way. We are not to be governmental or political in any way. Right. We can't whisper in your ear some what we think is the right thing to do. We can give some suggestions through some telepathic thought processes, but that is the most uh, significant thing we can do to uh, denuclearize. Thank you for that. Thank you. You're uh, welcome. We, um, we've, we've come to the end, so we're really out of time. Suddenly, unlike in the very beginning, there's a million, million questions, but they'll just have to wait till the next time. So Interesting. <laughs> when I come, there's a million questions. <laughs> <laughs> You're very popular. But bless you all, and I'm sorry that I cannot answer all your questions. Mm -hmm. I would love to, but we're out of time. And um, talk to me in the astral, and I will answer many of them. Perfectly. Okay. And, and for the, those of you that didn't get your questions answered this time, um, just next week, uh, Takur will be, or I will, Jim will be back, and hopefully Takur. I will be back okay. next week if so you we'll want me to. So we'll those questions up again. Very good. Thank you. And much love to Takur. It's always a pleasure to have you here. Much love. Many blessings to all of you and peace on earth.